Hey everyone, I'm back to talk today about our new side stabilizer mount system, but it's a variation of the existing side stabilizer mount in that you now can use two stabilizers in a V configuration, so it's a dual stabilizer mount. This is an entirely new design in some ways. It also is uh, similar and it's really um, an outgrowth of the previous design on just the single side stabilizer on some aspects too. So we'll see what those are. Um, some of the things that are, are very similar about the two designs um, are the, the, the components on the quick disconnect portion. You get two of those of course. They are the same module that's used in the single side stabilizer mount. And then the middle module is also the same. You have some of the same screws used, the button head screws. But what is all new is the riser module, the riser portion. That had to be designed uh, to be able to accommodate the multiple uh, attachment points, of course. But it also incorporates something totally different in that it has left-hand threading on one of these two junction points. And there's a very specific reason for that. I'll explain that here. And, and talk about how you can get great performance out of this product. You may not have realized we have this product. I think a lot of people don't know yet. Uh, also, you may wonder why you would want to have two side stabilizers. Uh, perhaps you've seen that in competition use. Uh, if you have, then you probably do have a sense of what this is geared towards and what it can be good for. It's not just for targets, field, 3D, or even maybe indoor, uh, that might be the perception people would have that it's really only for that kind of archery. I would say no, it definitely can be utilized on a bow hunting setup too. And in particular on certain bows you might find that you can get considerably better overall stability because of the additional mass on the lower part of the bow that you're bringing into play here. So it's not just about canting uh, from, you know, on the axis of, you know, like essentially on the third axis, it's not just the cant that way that you're, you're impacting with your stabilizers. You're also looking at forward roll and how much, how much forward mass you want to have. And, you know, that can be altered to some degree, of course, by what's on the front bar, how long it is, how much weight's on it, and how far you have your, if you're using a side uh, stabilizer single unit, how far you have that swung out and down, that can all impact, of course, the various axes that the bow will have uh, rotation on and how much it cants one way or the other. But this can do some additional things that a single bar simply can't do. By having two here, you can go shorter and less weight, of course, on each one. And in the end, you will be a little heavier, of course. You have a heavier mount than, than a single bar but you're not going to be considerably heavier in some cases and you'll get much greater overall anchoring of the lower portion of the bow. So I'll show you how we put it on and maybe then I'll also talk a little more about, uh, about the design here. We want to get into the, these left hand threads because they are really a, a neat feature. I've never seen that used on a product uh, like this. I mean there could very well be something out there but I haven't seen that. So let's dive right into it here. Side stabilizer mount is best, as I've said with our single bar version, is best suited on the rear of the riser. Most of the bows out today do have a bushing inserted where you can do that. Uh, this here is the Summit 6, of course it's the tapped out edition. As you can see we got all the titanium accessories on here and things. And this is a great shooting bow, I really like the tapped out bows. This has one bushing on the rear of the riser. Uh, the Ridge 34, for example, does have two bushings from, from Athens. So what you'll get from us is all the, the, the fasteners you'll need to be able to adjust this, completely attach this to your bow. I have one screw left right now that I haven't used yet, and that is the one that goes through the center of the riser bracket, so that goes right into that bushing. Let's go ahead and, and start to tighten that down into there. You know what, with this bow in particular, and other bows too that don't have a lot of space here, it's best to start just with a, with a hand tighten, simply because of space 
you know, concerns. Even if you had a folding, like I do have folding Allen key sets I could bring over, and you could fold those over and turn that a little more easily. Um, even those are a little more cumbersome than initially just hand tightening that. And then what I do next, as you can see, I've already picked it up here. I do have a socket wrench. I use a one quarter drive with the 3 16th bit. It just provides so much more ease of, of adjustment and allows me to get far greater torque on my connection to points than, than you ever could achieve with a simple Allen wrench. I don't care what kind you have, what kind of T-handle you have, you're not going to be able to come close to the amount of torque you can apply through even a one quarter drive like this. So I look for essentially to have that level and that's, that's about where it's at right now. So I'll just tighten it down a little bit. Uh, you'll find if you use this method like I do with a socket wrench that you do want to take it slow, a couple clicks at a time initially, and before you know it, you have some incredible amount of force being applied there and tightening that in. Now, where these quick disconnect modules are right now, you can see they're, they're both angled down pretty far. They're not, these junction points aren't tightened down yet. They don't need to be angled that far down, of course. So let's go ahead and make some adjustments here. Now, I already had it set ahead of time so that the left-hand thread screw that I've been talking about here is on the left hand side of the bow. That's already in there. So you'll see here, I'm going to turn right and that loosened it. So that's, that's right, loose, left, tighten, left hand thread. All right. Why is it oriented that way? What is the point of the left hand thread? It's a big deal because I, I made it a big deal and I made it a point of acquiring the screws which were hard to find and going through the hassle of getting this machining done the way we wanted it for a very specific purpose. And uh, I'll, I'll tell you right now what the point of it is, and then we'll go further on about adjustment. So let's put a bar on here. This was my sidebar from this bow. I'm running only a single stabilizer on here right now. And let's look at the configuration you have here. So let's assume that we're, that would be where we actually have it mounted at. Let's just tighten it down. All right, so we're going to be tightening left, tightening to the left, and that's tight. That's real tight there. Now this portion of the adjustment range, that tightens from the bottom right here. I won't tighten that down yet for the purposes of this demonstration. We don't need it to be tightened down. Obviously, if you're going to be shooting, you're going to determine where you want to start, and you're going to tighten that joint down as well. But right now, I don't need to do that. I just want to show you something. Okay, so let's assume everything's tight, it's in its position, and this is then how you will be using this bow. If this is the stabilizer direction, it is likely to touch the ground uh, when you sit the bow down on a, on a stand like this. Certainly the bottom here, the weights, would hit the ground. Also, too, just carrying the bow around, it's, it's likely at various times you might bump the bottom of this stabilizer. Slight bumps over time, sitting the bow down repeatedly. What do you think that does if you don't have a left hand thread? Over time, that serves to loosen that joint. So by going to a left hand thread, it's a very simple fix. It's one of those little things you could say is a, it's a clever thought. It's nothing brilliant, but it's a clever idea to put into play. In that, now when you sit this bow down or when it might potentially inadvertently bump something, you are only serving to further tighten that joint. So it's continually self-tightening. And here's another way it self-tightens. When you shoot the bow. So let's look at a bow shot, a bow going off. You have all this energy driving forward. Okay, see energy driving that bow forward. Which way is the stabilizer driving upward? So it has momentum. It's carrying with it upward, which is serving to further tighten that joint. So that is why this, this product really is another innovative item. If you shoot a dual stabilizer mount now, you'll find that this is a very simplistic, easy to use design. It's practically designed like every product I put out. They all need to be practical and make sense and be straight to the point, minimalist design. We're not looking for frivolous design traits. We're not looking for excessive uh, decoration. We're not looking for excessive material. We want to strip it down to what is the most basic and functional aspects of the product. So 
That being said, let's talk about functional. Let's talk about practical. Let's talk about performance. In this mount, we use 7075T6 aluminum because in this case, the structural uh, integrity, its strength is relevant when, and, and how it absorbs and handles vibration and, and how much it may flex through the shot. So we want the, the, the mount to have as little flex through the shot as possible. The stabilizers are designed with a certain degree of, of flex in mind, although ultra high mod carbon doesn't flex very much. That's certainly the case, and that's, that's why that was selected. But there is some degree, there is always a medium with stabilizers to, to be able to achieve the right amount of vibration control and vibration absorption, and also the, the degree of stability you need in the, the stabilizer. But when it comes to the mount, we want as much strength as we can get for as light as we possible. Uh, ideally, you know, maybe in time we will release a titanium version of a mount just like this. However, the price is excessive. Um, you know, to do it, I just don't see it really at this point in time having the level of demand or having it be a practical product to offer. However, it could be something we would do. For the time being, though, we are more than happy with 7075 T6. It is extremely strong and it does a great job. So while you'll see, you know, the term aircraft grade aluminum thrown around, that means essentially nothing. Don't buy into the hype because somebody says something's aircraft grade. There's a bunch of grades that are aircraft grade. 6061 is aircraft grade. There's even other alloys that are considered aircraft grade. Look at what the actual material is. We always say that better materials, practical design equal high performance. That's what we put into these products. So you can make your adjustments after it's on based on where you ultimately want to be. Uh, with your up and down, your left and right. As I've discussed in other videos, there is significant benefit to having the stabilizer uh, canted downward, closer to the cam. There's no doubt about the, its ability to control the bow better. Some people don't like how it looks, some people don't like how it carries. You'll get used to it. If you put it on like that and, and, you, and you shoot with it and you carry it that way, trust me, I, I just came out of the turkey woods today. My bar is more angled out even than this is. And, uh, you know, you can manage quite well once you're used to it. So on the right side of the mount, of course, is your other quick disconnect portion here. And that also has full range of adjustment, obviously, horizontal and vertical. And, you know, where you would end up with that, the angle of that bar could vary. Uh, you know, it might not be the same as the angle on this side. You may not even have the same length bar depending on what it is you're working to accomplish with your bow, what it is you're offsetting, and how much you need to. So that is a right-hand thread screw, though, because that does not need to be on the, uh, a left hand. That is now on the right side of the bow, and we are not going to have the, uh, the same direction. So a bottom hit on a right-hand thread on the right-hand side of your bow is doing the exact same thing. It's serving to tighten. So we now have two self-tightening joints continuously tightening, continuously staying tight. I think that's what you're looking for, obviously, in, in any product. It's something that you know is going to have durability and going to hold up. So I like that. I think it's a great product. I, I need people to look at it, though. People don't know we have it. So take a look. There's a lot of things we carry. I believe that people are not fully aware that we have. Uh, they've maybe, maybe heard uh, some, some discussion about it, but they don't know we have it. We've now added a uh, number of varieties for our cable guards. You can add variations as far as raw titanium tubes. We have these uh, tube dampers we've added on from Limb Saver. We've added radical archery design broadheads. We've been selling for several years now, sword sights, uh, tree limb quivers. You know, the list goes on and on. Bulldog targets. You know, there's a lot we do. And we're only going to continue to grow out with other products uh, brought in from other manufacturers if it makes sense in my business plan to sell those. If it's something I believe in and I will invest my, my time in, I'll put my name behind, then in many cases it certainly makes sense to offer that product through our site. TitaniumArchyProducts.com. Go to the upper right hand portion of the screen if you want to search. There's a search box. Type in a term. I know people at times have trouble finding what they want. Use that search box. That search feature is very practical. It works really well. Um, like today, I was just experimenting, just proving to myself again how effective it is. I typed in bundles. All the bundles, boom, pop up. 
type in quick disconnect. Anywhere the quick disconnect is going to be featured, whether by itself or in a bundle, will come up. You can find what you want really fast if you just use the search feature. TitaniumArcheryProducts.com. I thank you guys for your time. As always, I'm really grateful for everything you've done to support us, especially in these difficult times that everybody's going through right now. Uh, just know that, that we're here. We're doing our best to, uh, to be able to be available and to, to show sympathy, too, for situations people are in. I know it's difficult, and archery may not be a top priority for some people at this point in time, and that's completely understandable, and that's, that's the right way to view things. Archery is not life. Archery is important to us. It's my, it's my job. It's my business. But it is not more important than family, safety, health, um, you know, your faith. Stay, stay strong, everybody, and we'll talk again soon. Take care.